Did you know that you can completely skip the mechanics at War Priest? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> or that you can sword swipe up the jumping puzzle and skip almost all of the platforming? Wow. There's tons of secrets inside this raid. So today, we're going to test hidden tips, glitches, and myths inside of King's Fall. We've collected videos of all those secrets and tips and compiled them into this video. Whether you've killed Oryx hundreds of times or maybe never even seen him, here's all the things you may or may not know about the King's Fall raid in Destiny 2. Did you know that the secret platforms in the opening of the King's Fall raid still exist? These platforms led us to different secret areas, hidden entrances, lore pieces, secrets, exotic quests, and more. And they're still inside the raid all over in the opening. A lot of people know about the secret platforms you use to get the chest or the relic inside the raid, but they don't know that they're scattered all the way through the Hall of Souls. You can actually use these plates to speed up the first encounter, or you can use this to go explore different secrets inside the Dreadnought, but beware, if you stay too long, you might potentially die. Do you actually know how the relics in the opening encounter work. A lot of people think that the timer is determined by when you and your partner on the other side of the map pick it up, but that's actually not how it works. The timer actually starts when you and your partner dunk the relics and when they spawn. Immediately after they spawn, if someone picks it up, you'll have the maximum amount of time that you can get with those relics once they appear. So if you want to make this part of the encounter go way faster, instead of having the same person or two people go back and forth and back and forth, which is a waste of time, instead have people set up ready to go as soon as you dunk. If they're where the relics are going to spawn, then you'll have the maximum amount of time to get through this and you won't have to repeat any section. It's also an easy way to basically auto-complete the Control Dunks Triumph for the King's Fall Raid seal. So the next time you jump into the raid, instead of wasting time, do it this way to save time. Did you know you can one phase the War Priest? All you got to do is know where to stand. You can stand on the left and the right side and have a clear shot at his critical spot and he won't hide behind any of the tablets. Did you also know that you can actually block the War Priest's white mechanic? If you're on a hunter, turn on Raiju's harness and then block using your Arc Super and the Whirlwind Guard. Hunters have another trick up their sleeve with the Blight Ranger helmet. You can actually generate orbs while blocking as well, but it only keeps you alive, not the rest of your team. So they'll have to go hide. But if you're on a Titan, you can actually turn on the Sentinel blocking shield and do the same thing. You can generate orbs using the Ursa Furiosa gauntlets if you want. So if blocking with a shield works. Can I block with a sword? We slapped on the stronghold gauntlets and found out. The short answer is that it's inconsistent. We sent our resident Lament user Spar out to block and one time he was absolutely able to tank the entire Oculus attack. However, we tried this on the other side and our results were a little different. <laughs> The Zawuli's Bane hand cannon is one of the hot weapons to get from the raid. But did you know that it actually has a glitch? Its reload animation is actually bugged. Watch this in slow motion. The person on the right in third person is opening it up like a normal hand cannon, flicking it off to the side, which is completely borked. Did you catch that? If you didn't, here's another angle. You can see the video of the person on the left flicking it off to the side. While this doesn't affect anything, it's just kind of a fun little glitch. Did you know that you have a full 20 seconds once you start the glyph reading to actually start the process before the war priest kills you? Don't let that happen. No, 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 no. Use this cheese instead. Once the glyph reading sequence starts, have the person on the left and the right stand on their plates and then have the center person step on, off, and on the plate. It will auto-complete and cheese the sequence. Did you also know you can figure out exactly where the next are going to spawn. Whatever side gets the brand first, the other two sides will have knights. Tons of videos have gone over the red border chest that you get at the end of the raid. All you have to do is shoot three glyphs throughout the raid that are shown in this first area here under the Court of Oryx. Here's a quick pick with all the symbols and locations, but did you know the first three glyphs can actually glitch out and actually cause you not to get the chest? If you see those first three symbols, reset the raid or else you might feel like this. This is a fun one. Did you know that you can actually leave butt wipes in the first part of the War Priest encounter? All right, something a little bit more useful. Did you know that you can actually stop Oryx from attacking you? If you kill all four of the knights on the different plates when he's shooting you with the taken bombs, it will stop the encounter early. 
Oryx takes you into the Taken Thunderdome, he can actually be really hard to hit when he's in his Shade of Oryx form. But did you know that if you plop out a Stasis Grenade, you can actually freeze and track him all around the map. As long as the Taken Thrall aren't coming into the area, the Stasis Turret will continually freeze him and track him all across the map. Also, if you freeze him with enough Stasis Effects, you can get him to twirl around like this. If you're on a Titan and you use Inferno Whip, which is in the Seasonal Artifact, you can completely stun the Shade of Oryx and keep him from moving. Do you know how much Death Singer's power it takes to charge the door in the Totem's encounter of the King's Fall raid? It takes exactly 200. I'm not sure why people might want to know, but now you do. This is a fact that most Destiny vets know, but to increase your mobility while using a relic, while you can't double jump, you can jump and melee at the same time to make this part of the raid go faster. Occasionally in the raid, you might cut it close, just barely complete the encounter. Especially here at Totems, you can have a glitch happen where it will constantly wipe your entire team. Instead of going to orbit and maybe losing a red border chest, you can continually chain res people and stand on the plates or progress to the next part of the encounter and you can still get it to work. If you do this enough, you can start the encounter and save yourself a trip to orbit and save yourself a red border. A lot of people know that at the sister's encounter, you're supposed to get the wizard that shoots at you and steal the brand from her. But there's multiple ways to do this and you can choose what you want to do. If you steal the brand from the wizard that's shooting at you and kill her, the other wizard is still casting a hymn, which can kill all of you if you're not inside of the aura. At this point, you can actually kill all the enemies and stuff outside of this area, but you'll want to watch that timer as closely as possible because if you're caught outside of it, you'll actually die like Spar here. Some people don't like to grab the brand from the wizard that is shooting because it's significantly slower and so instead they go for the wizard that is glowing green and singing. If you kill her within the amount of time you're going to be good to go. However if you don't this is going to happen. So choose your adventure on how you want to take out the sisters, whatever works best for your group. Here's a fun one that we tested on stream. Did you know that you can infinitely steal the gaze from Golgoroth? It's a really cool strategy. All you need to do is be on an invis hunter, shoot the crit spot on his back, and then dodge right away. That will remove the timer, but keep Golgoroth locked directly at you, meaning that you can infinitely do damage all the way up until the enrage timer. However, for some reason, when you do this, it causes the ball of light that are tied to the ceiling to not actually respawn, meaning that you only have that one pool of reclaimed light to do damage. So it takes a while. How many times have you been at the final encounter with Oryx and people just aren't getting on their plate fast enough? It's taking a long time for them to spawn the plates. Well, one cool trick you can do is actually use a shortcut. You can wait for the plates to spawn up, or you can actually hop on top of the sister's platform for just a second. If you keep jumping up and down, it won't actually kill you. You can actually use this to speed up the jumping part of this puzzle, or you might actually hop onto some of the plates before they even spawn, like you see in the video here. This is really good for those people who aren't so great at platforming, because you can always jump over there and save yourself. Here's another myth that we heard. If you take all six members of your fire team inside of one blight and use it, it will actually cheese the encounter and have it work like six blights instead of just one. This would be a game changer for the Oryx encounter and would allow you to do an insane amount of damage on Oryx for a long period of time. It might even allow you to complete some triumphs really, really easily. However, when we tested it, it was the same amount of time as one blight. So myth busted. If you're the person that struggles with the platforming part of the wall there's a couple of ways to get around it just grab a sword go to the area with the first plate and find this ridge that's just sticking out here as long as you have sword ammo you can easily slide up this thing and save yourself a ton of time Another cool trick is if you're on a Warlock and you proc Heat Rises with a grenade, you can repel off the wall like Dark Flame is here on screen to get past the jumping puzzle. We wanted to test another myth that we had seen in a couple of spots on Reddit. We've had some people say that you can actually stop the Light Eater Knights from eating the Blights. Most people know that you kill the Light Eater Ogres and they will leave a Blight behind. And then if you don't kill these Knights, they'll run over and gobble the different Blights that you use for damage for Oryx. Someone said that you can stop them from eating the Blight if you're doing damage to them, but we tried that and myth busted. At the final stand part of the Oryx encounter, there are two Light Bearing Ogres that spawn up and allow you to to do damage to orcs in the final stand. Many people detonate both of those flights at the same time. However, you can actually extend the phase longer 
by detonating one orb, stunning him once, and then detonating the other one for an even longer damage phase. We tested this and did find that this extends the phase quite a bit and is very easy to do, especially if you're struggling with damage at Oryx. This is the number one strat that most teams will probably use on the master mode of the King's Fall raid. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you did like this video, then gently tap that like button. Leave a comment down below. It would mean the world to me because these videos take a really long time to make. And by doing this, it helps YouTube drive the algorithm to share this video with more people in the Destiny community. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. That way you are guaranteed God rolls or a family friendly, warm feeling inside. We recorded the vast majority of this over at my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash Destra, where we've helped thousands of guardians with exotic quests, raids, grandmasters, and more. Make sure you join our community Discord, which is growing and which we're hoping to get past 5,000 members soon. As always, good hunting guardians. I'll see you next time in the universe of destiny.